Android Studio Dolphin, also known as version 2021.3.1, is now stable and available for download. This version brings a lot of changes, including tooling improvements in Jetpack Compose, stable support for greater monitor devices, improved support for OS, and more. Let's see all of this in detail. First, let's look at the improvements to Jetpack Compose tooling. In an imperative UI model, you call a setter to change its internal state. In Compose, the framework calls a composer function with new data when the values used by the composer are changed, which is called recomposition. To easily understand when your UI recomposes, the layout inspector now allows you to see the recomposition and the skip counts to inspect potential performance issues in your app. Let's take a look at the example code where two buttons and its clicked counts are shown. Run the application and open the layout inspector and make sure show recomposition counts is checked. As you click the first button, you can see the recomposition count for the first button is increased. It is also important to make sure the recomposition count for the second button isn't increased because the recomposition should only happen for components whose dependent values are changed. To enable recomposition counts, make sure you use at least version 1.2.1 of the Compose UI tooling library. Wanna learn more about the Compose performance? Check out the document about what is recomposition under this Google I.O. video. We introduced animation preview in Android Studio Chipmunk, where you can preview the Compose animation, but it was limited to a single animation. With Android Studio Dolphin, it's possible to see all the animations at once and coordinate them. To begin, click on the Start Animation Preview button in the Compose Preview window. Now you can see the All Animations tab where you can play all the animations, change the speed, and skip to a specific time. The Animation Preview window can also visualize the animation curves to make sure the animation values are choreographed properly. Additionally, if you are using Compose UI tooling version 1.2 or higher, you can freeze animations by expanding it and clicking the freeze icon for the selected animation to only inspect specific ones. For now, only the update transition and animated visibility APIs are supported, with more coming in future versions of Android Studio. Keep in mind that Start Animation Preview button will only be shown when those animations are detected. Check out the collection of Compose animation samples where you can play with various APIs. The last improvement in the Compose tooling is multi preview. When you want to preview your composable in a variety of configurations like both dark and light mode or different device sizes, you need to repeat those definitions for every single composable. Rather than writing separate Compose previews for each of these configurations, Android Studio Dolphin introduces multi preview, which allows you to create multiple previews for each composable. Let's take a look at the example in Jet News. Here you can see an annotation class with different font sizes. And here's one with different device types. And here's another annotation class that combines both the fonts and the devices. When attached to a composable, the preview window renders multiple previews based on the preview configurations. Note that combining multiple annotations doesn't mean all the different combinations of options are shown. Instead, each annotation renders only its own variants. In this case, two previews for light and dark themes, two previews for font scales, and three previews for device configurations are shown. For more details, take a look at the documentation. Next up, testing. Gradle Manager Devices and Automated Test Devices are now stable. Gradle Manager Devices allows you to define a set of virtual devices in the Build Gradle file that are fully managed by the Android Gradle plugin. This means that the creation, deployment, and the teardown of the devices are handled by AGP automatically when running instrumented tests. Let's take a look at an example of a device definition in an app module's build Gradle file. 
Here, we give the virtual device a name. Then, we tell the Android Gradle plugin to use the Pixel 3 device and to set the API level to 30. You can use the same device profiles and API levels that are available to you from Android Studio. Finally, we want this device to come with Google Play Store and APIs, so we set the source of this image as Google. Alternatively, you can set the source of the image as AOSP if you don't need Google Play Store and APIs. To run tests with Grid Manager devices, run the Android test task with the device name and the build variant. For example, if you want to run the test against the virtual device we configured previously using the debug version of the build, run the following command. Note that if you used this feature before bypassing the experimental flag, you can now remove the flag because the feature is stable. Under the Gradle plugin does all the heavy lifting for you from downloading the system images it needs, running the tests on the device, returning the results, to shutting down the device after the tests are finished. Another testing feature that has become stable is the automated test devices. An automated test device is a special type of GMD image, which removes pre-installed apps that are typically not useful for testing your app, disables certain background services, and disables hardware rendering to use fewer system resources. To use an automated test device, first make sure you update the Android emulator to the latest available version. Then add the ATD suffix in the Gradle Manager Devices configuration. Note that there are also Google ATD devices available with Google services, but if you don't need them, AOSP ATD is even lighter. You can now the test from the command line just like you would using other Gradle Manager devices. Android Studio Dolphin also introduces several improvements for Wear OS. In the past, it was cumbersome to pair Wear OS emulator with a phone device because you needed to forward the emulator's communication port using ADB command. The new Wear OS emulator pairing assistant added in the device manager allows you to connect a Wear OS emulator to a physical or virtual device more easily. To use the pairing assistant, click the overflow menu at the right of the Wear OS emulator from the device manager and select Pair Wearable. Then select the companion device from the list. Note that the companion device must be running under your 11 or higher and has to have the Google Play Store installed. Once the connection is established, you can see the linked icons on both of the Wear OS emulator and the companion device. Now you are able to configure the behavior of the Wear OS emulator using the companion app on the phone device. Moving on to the next improvement. New run configurations have been added to quickly run and debug surfaces specific to Wear OS, such as watch faces, tiles, and the complications. To begin, click the gutter icon next to the declaration of the surface. For example, here you can see a declaration for a watch face. It will create a run configuration if it hasn't been created. And you can now run or debug the watch face just like a normal Android application. Alternatively, you can create a new configuration by navigating to run and then click edit configurations. You can now choose configurations for watch faces, tiles, and the complications, or edit the existing configuration you've created. The last improvement for Wear OS is the update toolbar for the Wear OS emulator. Wear OS emulators with API level 30 or higher now have buttons that resemble and simulate the physical buttons on Wear devices. The new buttons include two main buttons that act as the physical button on the watch, and the palm button and the tilt button that simulate activating the gestures on the watch. Moving on to other updates, Logcat has been updated to make it easier to parse, query, and track logs. Logcat now format logs to make it easier to scan useful information, such as tags and messages, and identify different types of logs, such as warnings and errors. You can create multiple tabs within Logcat, 
so that you can easily switch between different devices or queries. Additionally, you can split the view within a tab by right-clicking in the lag view and selecting either split right or split down. Each split allows you to set its own device connection, view options, and the query. You can also quickly switch between different view modes, standard, compact, and custom by clicking the configure locate formatting options button. Each view mode provides a different default setting for the level of detail shown, such as timestamps, tags, and the process IDs. You can customize each of these default view modes to suit your preferences by selecting modify view. In the previous version of Logcat, you had the option to either use string search or create a new filter by populating various fields using the Logcat UI. But it was difficult to search, set up queries, and share queries. To address these issues, the new Logcat panel introduces key value based searches right from the main query field to simplify the querying experience. This new system enables you to write queries which you can access later on or even share with other team members. Let's see some example queries. Package column mine filters the logs for the process IDs for the local app. You can filter the logs by specific tag values, such as tag column tag name, or specific level of logs, such as info, warn, or error. You can also exclude a specific value by prefixing the key with dash. Finally, you still have the option to use a regular expression in the query field by pressing a tilde after the key. It's good to know that as you type in the query field, Android Studio suggests the keys or values based on what you have typed in the query field. By pressing a control plus space, you can explicitly see the suggested values from Android Studio. That's it. I hope you enjoyed the new features and improvements in Android Studio Dolphin. Please help us improve the future version of Android Studio by submitting your feedback on our issue tracker, linked from the description. Remember to subscribe to our channel to not miss the future updates. See you next time.